Fat Ass 45 has built his public persona around the central importance of grabbing attention whether his actions provoke delight or fury. And yet he is, and has always long been, fucking boring. Um, four years into his failed squad and see, Fat Ass 45 isn't boring in, in boring in the way a dull, empty afternoon is boring. Fat, Fat Ass 45 is boring in the way that the seventh season of a reality television show is boring. A lot is happening, but there's nothing to say about it. The Fat Ass is a... Is a is a squatter without de without depths to plumb. What you see is what you get, and what you get is the same mix of banality, so 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 and racial hatred that has long been obvious. Um, badass forty five's abuses of the squad and are often compared to those of Richard Nixon, but Nixon had a deep, if troubled, interior life. One biographer characterized Nixon as struggling with tragic flaws. A description that is hard to imagine any credible biographer would use to describe Fat Ass Forty Five. In a democracy whose um, in a democracy whose um, vitality depends, at least in part, on what people are paying attention to and what they think about it, the frenzied monotony of Fat Ass Forty Five raises the question: What happens when politics is crucially important, but there's little, uh, but there is what they call little original to say. The fact the fact that pundits may have a tough time concocting original commentary is not, in itself, the country's biggest problem. But at least it's best the work of the people who write and and talk and make it art and make art about about the politics is valuable because it helps other members of society make sense of their shared world. If that work loses depth or re, or, re, or relevance, democratic culture in the United States diminishes, and people who otherwise would be engaged with politics turn their afternoon turn their attention elsewhere. It's not. <coughs> It's not that nothing is happening, with Election Day only a month away. Fat Ass 45 has repeatedly refused to commit to a peaceful transfer of power and is doing his best to cast doubt on the integrity of the vote, ca um, calling mail and ballots a whole big scam, which it's not. He's now poised to fill his third seat on the Supreme Court. Following the death of, Ruder, of, of Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, a victory that would tilt the politics of the court rightward for a generation. Um, throughout his squad and see, he has arguably committed dozens of impeachable offenses during his time in, in, um, squad and in the White House, from firing FBI Director James Comey and attempting to fire Special Counsel Robert Mueller to, um, Mueller to promising pardons to the Department of Homeland Security officials that they turned away asylum at the clint of the border to doling out a, com um, um, a commission to his associate, Dumbass Stone, seemingly as a reward for Dumbass Stone's refusal to testify against the fat ass during the Russia investigation. But while these scandals are important, there are also in some ways the same story. The fat ass is a greedy, racist, and misogynist who does not understand his job. And is it technical news if he's doing his usual racism? Pondered the Daily Beast reporter, Asawain Subsang, um, after fat ass 25 let loose a particularly bell um, screed against the representative Ilion Omer during his Klan rally this month. Even fat ass 45's disturbing threat not to concede is a, is a replay of his insistence in October um, 2016, that if he ex that he would accept the result of the upcoming election if he was if he if only he won, read any of the tell tell alls written by Fat Ass 45's for former <coughs> um former um former close associates um or family members, not to mention the journalists such as Bob Woodward, and you will come away with basically the same understanding as the journalist Jennifer Salazzi wrote. In her New York Times review of Woodward's latest cr chronicle, the Fat Ass 45 administration, the fat ass um, that emerges in rage is, um, is impetus and self-aggrandizing. Self self in other words, immediately recognizable to anyone paying even the minimal amount of attention. There is, some, there is something uncanny about this. The English novelist E. M. For Forster had argued that, um, that the difference between a fictional character and a real person is that, a, that it is possible to know everything about the character in a novel, and real people, however, see one another through a glass through a glass darkly. And yet, while it may not be possible to know every hidden detail of Fat Ass 25's life, it is truly it is true <coughs> it is um it is trivi trivially is easy to understand everything about his personality. If he were a character, Forster would call him flat and unrealistic. He does not, as Forster requires you have to have the capacity to surprise. At some point over the course of the Fat Ass 45 era, this became a running joke among political commentators who every time Fat Ass 45 does something appalling and yet obvious, it makes cracks, they make cracks on social media about how hackneyed the Fat Ass 45 um, squad and see would seem if it were fiction. This has created a problem for artists as well. 
surveying the landscape of an anti fat ass 45 arts in February of 2019, the cultural critic Jillian Steinhauer had argued that the work had failed to hit the mark. It was missing, she wrote, the critical intro introspection to accompany the laughter, but such introspection is hard to achieve when the person prompting it is so, uh, is so lacking in depth or inter interiority. Likewise, four years into, his, into this failed squadency, uncovering fresh insight into Fat S45 versus administration is difficult. Activists, journalists, and commentators found that those insights earlier on, use of the phrase, the cruelty is the point, coined by the Atlantic's Adam Sir Warren in 2018, has become widespread in part because it continues to be uncomplicitly true. And, um, <clears throat> a lot of the time, the motivations of Fat S45 and those around him are not actually more involved than a desire to hurt others. The idea is so simple that it's more or less become a meme, which isn't to deride its perceptiveness, but rather to say that the Fat S45 White House is fundamentally simple. Personally, I wrote a great, um, personally, the person wrote a great deal in the first few years of the administration about Fat S45's understanding of law as, as, as a cudgel against the vulnerable before it dawned on before it dawned on, on this person on, on the person that was writing this that, that they were writing the same article over and over again. Um, the late, this leaves two main options for those analyzing and writing about politics. One is to shrug and accept that the times may merit writing the same thing over and over again. The country is in the midst of an emergency, and what does it matter if the emergency is repetitive? Sometimes yelling loudly enough and for long enough can move the relevant political figures to act as it did in the case of the impeachment. But the danger is that by yelling, the speaker becomes part of the great roaring Fat S45 media machine, the engine of which is dependent on the, um, on the indignation um, of the Fat S's opponents as much as the Fat S's own vileness. There is no such thing as Fat S45 fatigue, the, journal the journalist Sopan Deb said when news of John Bolton's book broke in January. There will always be um, books... Um, um, there will always be um, Fat S45 books stuck enough oxygen and authors to make... Um, to make money off of. <clears throat> the same could be said of the fleet of the commentary launched by Bolton's book, and the books like his, like and what um and, and like Woodward's among them. Along these lines, the opinion writer Drew Ma 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 um, Ma Majeri announced recently that he will stop in his column out of, out of exhaustion with the ha hamster wheel of political commentary. He's like, I have nothing left to say beyond what what beyond what I've already said. That leaves the option of taking a step back from politics and finding intellectual engagement elsewhere. It may be enough to cult to cultivate your own artistic garden, Margaret Atwood wrote after Fat S45's election, suggesting that artists and writers find their footing in exploring hu um, common humanity. Lives may, de may be deformed by politics, and many certainly have been, but we are not finally the sum of, of, of our politicians. Atwood struck a hopeful no, but this instinct ran can also manifest as something more Po um, po po um, a turning in a turning inward rather than an effort to expand one's horizons beyond the events of the day. In 2019, um, Ben Katash um, Ra Rao began writing on his blog Ribbon Farm about what he saw as an emerging uh, atheistic um, uh, um, of, of home goods and fuzzy um, socks as a refugee for a politi from political tempest. Domestically cozy, as he called it, is, is something of a preemptive um, of a preemptive retreat from worldly affairs, from wor from worldly affairs, where a generation that quite understandable thinks that the public sphere has fallen apart. The comfort of weighted blanket can be a shield from political engagement as well as other people. This is a historical, um, what they call echo with the later years of the Soviet Union. In the seventies and eighties, many Soviet citizens, among them young people, writers, and artists, and the sorts of people one would expect to be engaged in political life had pulled away from politics, which seemed to, to be to, to, seemed to them to be a waste of time. They were not dissidents of act, or activists, they just didn't give a shit. Um, this lack of interest took different forms in his study. Um, the lack of interest took different forms in this study of the... Um, Um, hold on. <clears throat> this is a historical echo with the later years um, of the Soviet Union in the 70s and 80s. Many Soviets, um, um, 
Hold on, I'm here. I just lost my turn. It's all here. Okay, but uh, with some young Soviets, um, with the late Soviet period, everything was forever until it um was no more. The an anthro um public um anthropologist Alexei Yurchak described some young Soviets forming odd apolitical um artist collectives, while others joined clubs whose members passionately debated more or less everything except current events. Everyone is understanding everything, so why so why speak about um so why speak about that, it was uninteresting. A former university student told Yurchak dismissively, dismissively of dissident politics. Likewise, in exchange with an American sociologist during this period, one Soviet rock musician explained, We're interested in universal problems which don't depend on this or that system or on a particular time. His bandmate chimed in, People are interested in politics, and I don't know why they are. Um, second here. Um, these Soviet musicians might have agreed, but that would suggest that artists should focus on timeless explorations of what it means to be human. Your track also quotes a one-time member of an apolitical literary, literary club remembering the group as an artificially created microclimate, which recalls Atwood's vision of an artistic garden separate from politics or the Instagrammable comfort of domestic, domestically clo cozy. Writing in the New York Review of Books in 2019, um, the British writer Vip, Viv Gros Groskop wondered whether Westerners over overwhelmed by the news might wish to adopt the Soviet tradition of internal exile and curl into themselves to find peace away from politics. It's, it is reasonable, Groskop wrote, to conclude that apathy must surely be defensible as some kind of a political act. Those Soviets who withdrew from politics were, re were responding to the boredom of a public life curtailed by official um um to the boredom of a public life curtailed by a um, by official limitations on what could and couldn't be said today the boredom of the fat s twenty five era is the product of a different kind of censorship what the journalist peter palmer palmer and Tansov calls censorship through noise instead of the tedium of silence this is the tedium of endless clatter but it has the same um, effect. Whether you choose not to speak about politics and turn your attention elsewhere, or you decide to say the same thing over and over again, the odds are that political leadership will carry on, just as it has always done before, so why bother at all? The United States is not yet in the extreme circumstances in which your track subjects found themselves. When Atwood suggested in 2017 that artists should tend their own gardens, she was not recommending that they turn away from the news entirely. After all, She's continued to speak publicly about the Fat Ass 45 failed squadency and explore political themes in her fiction, but rather that they remember that there are ideas outside politics if, if Fat Ass 45 retains power for a second term, though resisting the, the pull of apathy may prove more difficult. This pervasive di disinterest is a dangerous thing for a democracy which depends on political engagement among its, among its people in order to survive, and Fat Ass 45 would surely welcome such detachment which would only make it easier for him to hold on to power. If Biden if, if Biden wins the election, the problem will likely fade when he is sworn in as um as our next president in January of 2021. Part of Biden's pitch to voters is that his is that his administration just won't suck up as much as their attention. Um, as as a Biden campaign ad asked in August, remember when you didn't have to think about 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 the squatter every single day, but under a Biden administration, fairness will not go away. Um. And, and, and alternative ways of engaging with them, ways that don't cultivate um, apathy, will be needed for the political and historical reckoning with Fat S45's legacy that will need to take place after he leaves office. Recently, a handful of writers have begun to suggest that such alternatives, the most essential books about the Fat S45 era, are not about Fat S45 at all. The Washington Post nonfiction critic Carlos Lozada wrote, um, writes in his forthcoming book on the literature of the Fat S45 era, What Were We Thinking? Better... The um, Lozada um suggests to examine the forces that enabled Fat S twenty five's rise to power, um, and his continued hold on it. Basically, similarly, similarly, um, um, so Lozzi argues in her review of Woodward's book that the real story about the Fat S twenty five era is less about forty five and more about the people who surround and protect them. Among among along these lines, Anne Applebottom recently or Apple bomb recently wrote in the Atlantic on the question of why Republican leaders choose to enable Fat S twenty five's abuses. And his and this conversation about responsibility and complicity has continued 
and complicity has continued to form to um, as former administration officials and staffers seek absolution and publicly supporting Biden. The role that made Fat Ass Twenty Five possible is deeper, stranger, and even more worthy of of of, that, of thought than Fat Ass Twenty Five himself has ever been. And studying it can offer answers and insights about the current administration about the current American crisis that the Fat Ass and his shallowness can't. This approach has another advantage too. It denies Fat Ass Forty Five. It denies Fat Ass Forty Five the thing that he wants most of all: undivided attention. Um. So if you like the video, give the video a like and subscribe to my channel, Ramp and Mike. And also hit the notification bell so that you'll be notified when a new video comes out. And thanks for listening.